Hello YouTube, this is RJ. Welcome back to Urban of the Woods. You read the precautions right. Today, we are going to talk about an illegal mushroom. Yeah. So this mushroom, uh, Psilocybe avoidio cystidiata, contains psilocybin, so it is psychoactive. Because psilocybin is a controlled substance, mushrooms that contain this chemical are generally considered illegal in the United States. Well, there are a lot of debates over the legality of the magic mushroom and over its purported harms and benefits, but none of these will be discussed today. Uh, the, today's video is all about identification, and we are going to use two spring mushrooms as, as, as the examples. The first mushroom is the wine cap mushroom, uh, Strophaeria, uh, Strophaeria, Strophaeria rugoso annulata, and the ovoid mushroom, uh, Psilocybe ovoidio cystidiata. They both appear in spring and grow in similar environments, and both of them are under the fungal order Agaricoles, also known as the guild mushrooms. So they probably share more similarities than you thought. While the wine cap could be justifiably called an entry-level mushroom, the ovoid is definitely not the easiest to identify. It could be roughly considered the little brown mushroom, a generic term for mushrooms you want to avoid because they all look pretty much the same, yet some are fatal. That's one thing. The other is that the ovoid is not so common, meaning you won't have many opportunities to train your eyes. That said, its identification is not impossible, just like many other so-called high-level mushrooms, because they share the basic structures and features with entry-level mushrooms. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Very easy to identify these mushrooms. Let me pick another one. But before that, I have one more tip to share. Don't force yourself to swallow just everything or try to memorize the exact combination of the identifying feature of a mushroom. That's too difficult for a beginner. Instead, try to pick up a few uh, basic characteristics, such as the shape of the cap and the color of the spore print, see, and see if you can find these features on other mushrooms. With more examples, you will get yourself familiar with these features. Print the image on your memory so that you don't miss it when you see it next time. And then attend to their variations, or the lack of them. By doing this, you start to learn more about other characteristics, and you will be able to easily read these features of a mushroom before you know it. That's how I started learning mushrooms. It's less intimidating, and it's a lot of fun. On our channel, you can use any identification videos to kickstart this process. A lot of basics are covered with examples of many different species. Or, if you are very curious and just want to know the name of the specimen while examining the fundamentals, you have our free tool, fungusid.com, to assist you. I started to notice ovoid mushrooms because of wine cap mushrooms. In Maryland, the wine cap appears in early May, after the morels. I often found them in wood chips and overflow areas along rivers. It features a beautiful meaty wine-colored cap and a white stalk with a thick ring loosely hanging on it. The gills are initially white, but you are more likely to see them in purple-gray. This is because they are tinted by the purple spores of the mushroom. Remember this basic structure as you will see them again on the ovoid. The ovoid pops up 
around the same time on overflow areas, but they are far less conspicuous. They are much smaller in size, without distinct color, and grow in dense clusters. Another banal mushroom you can't wait to ignore, right? But wait, there's more to them. So, yeah, you can see this one is more obvious because I didn't touch it, but it has already had some green bruise on its cap. I haven't but quite touched these little guys, like but they already show some greenish bruises on the flesh. This is a key identifying feature for the ovoid. Uh, it will turn green. Yeah, there's a greenish hue on its gills. Remember, not all psychoactive mushrooms bruise blue. The big laughing gym, for example, doesn't react so. Many non-psychoactive mushrooms change color when injured, like the apple bleed. It will turn from yellow to indigo within seconds. And the old man of the woods stings red. For the ovoid, the color changing process takes way longer. It bruises upon gentle handling, but it may take up to 10 minutes for the results to show, especially if your specimen is very young. If it is indeed the ovoid, you will definitely see the bruises, and they turn almost black after hours. Old specimens, on the other hand, will stop reacting to tortures. They are seasoned mushrooms, beaten up in nature, and already got dark blue all over. Now, let's take a look at the structure of this very young specimen. As a typical gilled mushroom, the ovoid has a cap and a stem. The cap is largely convex, but with a small knob, or protrusion in the center. As the mushroom grows, the cap will flatten out and get some wavy edges, and the knob becomes indiscernible. Remember the ring you saw on the stalk of the wine cap? You can find the counterpart on the ovoid too, right here in the red circle. Strictly, it is not a ring, but a mark of it. This is because the ring of the ovoid is cobweb-like and is very thin. It breaks apart as the mushroom grows, but some tissues may hang there, and they catch spores. Therefore, you can see the fuzzy dark band on the stem. The spores of the ovoid is dark brown with a purplish hue. The brown part is fairly easy to see, but the purplish tone is more subtle. I sometimes see it on caps where spores from uplayer mushrooms accumulate, but the camera cannot fully capture it. These are the key identifying features of the ovoid mushroom. There's nothing difficult about it, you may think. That's true if these characteristics would all appear on the same sample and there are no imposters around. This specimen, for example, is basically without any trace of the ring and the knob on the cap, yet it's still in an ovoid. You may also notice I didn't mention the color of its cap and stem, because nothing can be more unreliable than the colors. Remember the pretty wine cap mushroom at the beginning of the video? I have seen beige wine caps. And this is how it looks when old, taking on almost the same color as the ovoid.
，但反面很像。哦，它还有一点点那种紫色，紫色，但是泛灰紫色，那、嗯、这就完全变棕色。嗯 If you say the gills are too purple and the cap is too big for an ovoid, then how about all these clusters of little brown mushrooms that can grow literally adjacent to the ovoid? Can you still tell them apart with confidence? Well, I don't expect you can just by watching this video. I gain confidence and accuracy only after seeing thousands of、uh, mushroom examples. I see mushrooms in diff at different stages and in different environments,、uh, with various lookalikes. A part of the structure may be missing, and a single feature may fail you. And that happens all the time on wild mushrooms. If you want to get better at it, I think I would say the only way to improve is to see more, to practice more, until you can accommodate even the outliers. All right. I hope you have learned a few things about mushroom identification, and can find some opportunities to try them out. This is definitely a good way to start. Take my words for it. Bye.